Hey, hey, welcome to another vlog, vlog 46, 47, on this Tuesday afternoon. Um, excuse me for being tired. I'm actually kind of exhausted. It's like 3.40 in the afternoon. I just got home from an afternoon morning of playing some disc golf with my buddy Gary down in Irvine at Deerfield Community Park. Um, usually I don't like playing nine hole courses, um, and especially ones in like little parks, but this was cool. I was, you know, and, and Gary's, uh, dealing with some, my buddy Gary, who I've been playing with a couple years, um, has a problem, has an ankle issue. He's, he tore a ligament in his ankle, so he really can't play, you know, um, elevation courses like Huntington Beach or even El Dorado. So, um, went down to Deerfield and played a total of 36 holes of golf. That's a total of four rounds of nine. Really cool little course. Um, oh, wet, man. It's, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, we just had, we just had a rainstorm this past weekend, um, that, that dumped a decent amount of rain, but, um, According to Gary, this place, even during the summer, is soaked. I mean, you come out at 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's still wet out there, and they water the shit out of this place. We actually talked to one of Irvine's um, city workers, you know, water workers, and we said, you know, what's going on? Why is it overwatered? And he says, well, there's a problem with the computer and the satellite. I guess the satellite tells it when it's supposed to go on, and they've pre pretty much programmed it that the water goes on for a certain period of time and it's going longer and i kind of said well you guys need a manual switch you know to turn it off and he said city we asked and the city's not provided and doesn't want to do that well obviously that's because that would mean another person to manually go out and take care of a job another job description and once again technology fucks it up so can't rely on technology for everything, especially when it comes to watering the lawn. Um, sometimes you need a human to do the job correctly and not overwater. So, besides that, so went out and played 36 holes, went to Chronic Tacos afterwards. First time I've ever eaten there. Um, we have one actually literally just down the street here in Long Beach. And uh, decent, decent burrito, gotta say. Um... Yeah, so uh, went and had a good afternoon, and now I'm kind of tired from eating a big giant burrito. But uh, a little, you know, life update. Um, as of November 16th, I've been unemployed. I was laid off um, on good terms, though. Um, I have a letter of recommendation from my previous boss. Um, I had a job interview yesterday. I've been sending out my resume. I've been sending out my resume out for, for several months now, um, looking for a, a, a new job, um, pretty much since I had my hours cut back in, in July. Um, so yeah, being, being unemployed sucks. Um, uh, I applied for unemployment benefits. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I sent in... Um, uh, my social security number being one digit wrong and actually the first three digits um, <laughs> I screwed up on one of the numbers and it's funny because I put in the first three digits as the my local area code telephone area code here in Southern California and it's just an honest mistake I should have caught it but I've got to I had to fill out paperwork and send in proof of identification and it's going to take an extra you know seven to ten business days to get it processed and so on and so forth so i'm hoping that i get my unemployment checks in um because i'm in the process of moving i don't know if you can see i got boxes and shit stacked all over the place so we're moving on the 15th of this month to a two-bedroom duplex about four miles from here um and yeah, uh, just just uh, what's good though about being unemployed. If there is a good thing about being unemployed, and I guess seven almost seven and a half years of working full time 
without very much vacation. I mean, I do take did take a bit of vacation here and there, some road trips, some you know, obviously my honeymoon. Um, the good part about this is that it's allowing me to be home to pack during the day. It's allowing me to get out and play some disc golf, which is always fun. Um, you know, the wife has been really cool to be understanding, you know, say, hey, go out and, you know, go out and have some fun during the day. You know, um, she knows that I'm looking for work. I am looking for work. Believe me, being unemployed does not make me happy. Um, I really would like a job. <laughs> I'd like some unemployed, or some, uh, some benefits. I'd, I'd like some insurance. I'd like a steady paycheck. Um, but it's, it's really tough right now. The job market's just really, really tough. So, uh, excuse me for my voice. I think I'm just overly tired. God. Got up this morning. I worked out for the first time in a couple weeks. Um, and then played disc golf. So, excuse me. And then had a big-ass lunch. Um, let's see. What else? Been playing, like, a lot. Like I said, a lot of disc golf. Played the weekly a couple weeks ago at, at El Dorado. Um... And was able was third place with an I had an even round or yeah an even round and I got third place and I used my credits to get this very cool KC Pro AVR putter with the uh, with the 2012 Long Beach Open stamp on it shiny stamp you got California Long Beach down here and then the West Coast uh, disc golf uh, emblem there uh, I was thinking about using it because I've been wanting. A JK. Actually, I wanted to get a JK. A JK, or it's a KC Pro. I wanted to get a JK Pro um, as well. Um, so I might actually hang this up on the wall. It's just a really cool looking disc, and I wanted to get it. Um, hopefully, I'm not on frame. Um, and I had my best round of disc golf last Wednesday at Huntington Beach. Three down. Um, and Huntington Beach, it's a really tough course, even for as long as I've been playing it. I've never, I've shot two down, three down, especially during a weekly is, is excellent with my, uh, with my handicap of, of 10 strokes. Um, on average, I think average I've been, I've been shooting between like three over and six over. So I've got, I, Jerry gives quite a bit of, of, uh, of strokes. So, um, yeah, so moving um, you know, I don't really want to talk about politics, really, because I've decided um, that I'm not going to focus that much on politics as far as not liking the Republicans, not liking the Democrats, and really just focusing more on social engineering, social issues. Um, nasty, I just picked a zit. Sorry to be gross, but... Hopefully it hasn't been, like, bleeding or pussing on camera. Ugh, fucking nasty. Um, sorry about that. I'm sorry, like I said, I'm really tired. Um, so yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, to, to talk about politics. I want to focus more on societal issues. Um, because, like as Ron Paul said in his farewell speech, you can't change Washington before you change the people. And you can't change the people without educating the people about the modes of control that are basically bombarding the human body, the human mind, on a daily basis. Um, the social engineering, you know, I've been focusing more and more about social engineering because I think that's where the education people need to be see, you know, see where they're, where they're being controlled by the you know, mind controlled and body controlled and the slow kill weapons of the things we eat the air we breathe the food uh or the uh the water we drink about the social media the media that uh that uh you know mind controls and change our opinions and our perceptions of reality and so on and so forth um those are the things i want to focus on um the kid from two and a half men talking about the way, you know, television, you know, tends to change your, your brain and the way, you know, television, you know, works on the human mind. You know, he got a lot of shit for saying that, mainly because of his religious background and what he, what, you know, what his religious stance is. 
But what he said is very true, and it's scientifically proven that, that television does have an effect on the human brain. It's, it's got an effect if you allow it to control you and sit down and watch, you know, seven hours of TV, five hours of TV a day. You know, you can be manipulated by it, and it becomes a drug. It actually affects the, the, affects the, uh, the brain, the human brain. Much like a way a, a drug would 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 you know a coke a, you know heroin cocaine so on and so forth, um, it it alters your perception of reality. It you know influences you to consume products. Um, and this is all scientifically researched and scientifically proven. It's not conspiracy theory. It's not oh you're some fucking nut job. No, it's truth. So my goal here with some of my vlogs and, and some of the things that I email people about, I want to stray away from talking about how bad Obama and foreign policy. Every once in a while, I'll kind of throw out, you know, a little nugget of truth when it comes to Obama or Republicans or whatever. But I, I want to steer, steer, you know, steer away from that and focus a little bit more on society because... Um, We've got to change ourselves before we can change politically. And like Ron Paul said, you have to, you know, uh, moral people, you know, uh, more, this, in order for government to work or for people to be free or, and, and to have liberty, you have to have a moral people. And we don't have a moral people today. And you have people, a matter of fact, I saw a story this morning on the news of, of parents rushing to register their kid in some school because some elementary school because they had a an engineering program and literally they were trampling over each other. Um, this is signs of a of a morally uh, and uh, dehumanized culture. Um, Black Friday, another perfect example. So, with that being said, I hope everyone else is doing good. Hopefully, I'll have a vlog saying, "Hey." Got a new job, fingers crossed, um, and we'll be maybe the next vlog will be from my new place. We'll see. Adios. Take care. Talk to you later.